The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey, everybody. Welcome to uh, our newest edition of the Farmer's Market Support Program's Farmer's Market Matter Matters webinar series. Um, this is a project of Community Farm Alliance the, um, and the Farmer's Market Support Program. Uh, for those of you watching this on YouTube after the fact, um, Community Farm Alliance is a grassroots organization in Kentucky uh, working towards um, providing uh, good community service and uh, support for farmers and the communities that support farmers uh, throughout the state. Um, so for those of you in attendance, um, welcome. We're thrilled to have you. Uh, we're really excited about today's webinar. Uh, we have some great presenters um, uh, joining us. And I, I wanted to quickly go through some of the uh, controls at your disposal. Um, if you go to the control panel in the GoToWebinar Go to um, application, uh, you have a way to ask questions in the, in the control panel. Just click on that and ask questions um, however they come up. As the presenters are going, I will uh, go through and provide those questions to the presenters when there's a good opening to do so. Uh, if there's anything that I can answer, I'll do so as well. Um, you also, if you have the, if you have a micro, if you know you have a microphone on your computer, um, or you were, you've called in, uh, you can also raise your hand and ask your, ask your question, um, directly. We're happy to do so. Um, you have two handouts in the control panel that are the presentations that we will be going over today. So please take a look at those. Um, after the fact, they hopefully they, they will be useful to jog your memory of today's webinar um, and something you can f take home with you uh, so you don't necessarily just have to go find the recording after, after we're all done. Now, that being said, this is being recorded and it will be uploaded to our YouTube um, Monday Market Matters channel. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and I think that's it. So. Today we have Sandy Kurd from the Kentucky Highlands Investment Corporation and uh, Kristen Smith from Faulkner Bent Farms and the Wrigley Tap Room to talk about fundraising. Uh, they're both particularly skilled at it uh, in, with the Whitley County uh, markets, um, and we're thrilled to have them. So uh, I think we're ready to go. Um, Sandy, I'm going to toss it to you. Okay. Alrighty, okay folks, uh, Sandy Curd here, and I'm just trying to see whether or not I can get my PowerPoint to show up without you guys reading my emails. Uh, let's see here, fundraising, uh, come on, PowerPoint. And are I'm not seeing anything, are you all seeing anything? Nope, not yet. Not yet. Okay, it's showing up at the bottom instead of opening up. What has gone? Oh <laughs> goodness. Do you want to try from your end to get it to pop up? Yeah, I can. I can do that. Okay, do that. See if you can get it to. While James is working technology um, magic, let's see. Continue downloading. There we go. There we go. Fundraising PowerPoint. There we go. Oh, there we are. And now, do I need to hit slideshow, or can you do that? Uh, you 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 can do that. You'll need to ena um, okay. Click enable From editing the first. There we go. Oh, okay. There we go. I'm there. Does Perfect. that work? Okay. All right, all right, guys. Apologies for that. Um, one of these days, I'll catch up with the 21st century. So anyhow, I'm Sandy Curd. Um, I have a farm in Whitley County, uh, but I have to make a confession. I've got to be Kentucky's very worst uh, farmer. Uh, uh, some of you may have heard of feral cats that come to live in your barn for 18 months had a feral heifer who lived on my farm. Uh, great story, love to tell you sometime, but uh, but anyhow, that just gives you an idea of uh, how an ep I am. But anyhow, uh, as, I, as a farmer, 
I, I was so excited when Whitley County got a farmer's market. And so I went to that organization. I joined that organization as an associate member. I wasn't really in a position to sell at the market, but I wanted to be a part of the farmer's market. Uh, from there, I was elected from the membership to be the board of directors. I served in that position about a, a couple of years uh, and then uh, walked away from that role. But in that process, of, of serving in that capacity, I came to a realization, and that is we can't rely on volunteers only to keep our farmer's market thriving. Um, and the way I did my calculation is I'm like, you know what, we really need to have for a thriving farmer's market, we need to have a full-time person uh, hired, paid a livable wage to make this work. Now, now, what would they be doing in this work? I thought, okay, well, they're not only just setting up the market because the farmers are too busy to do that, uh, but they're going after grants and they're running your double dollars program and, and they're running your social media and your advertising campaign and they're coordinating other volunteers. Uh, have you ever volunteered for something and you got there and nobody told you what they wanted you to do and you felt kind of silly for being there? Well, you've got to eliminate that. Uh, they've got to coordinate uh, getting the market out to where the people are with mobile markets and creative ideas um, and especially doing those types of things when a, a produce is abundance and uh, farmers need help uh, getting them to uh, new pockets of individuals. Um, but the, the most important part, I thought, of this full-time market manager was this idea that they were constantly working the farmer pipeline. And by that, I mean they were constantly working with the farmers that were selling to the market to get them to uh, look at ways to increase their profitability, to advance their business, to move it <clears throat> from the farmer's market and keep moving up the economic ladder uh, to be a real economic powerhouse. And if you're doing that, and Whitley County has done that, it wasn't me, but Whitley County has done that, and Kristen is our prime example, and you'll hear from her in just a moment. But if you do that, then you're building economy using ag in your area. But the other part of the pipeline you've got to watch is the entry level. Where are you going to find those people who are just experimenting with growing vegetables and getting them involved and getting them coming into that so that you always have a flow of variety and uh, sustainability in your farmer's market? And so part of me was like, yeah, man, but $30,000 a year. And I just, full confession here, we haven't made that in, in Whitley County yet. We're, but you know, that's the, that's the goal. Um, so why do I think that we need that level of detail in the farmer's market? Well, it has to do with our customers. And the reason why I say that is because the customers at the farmer's market, what do they have to compare to the market? They've got people that have been doing this for decades, like Kroger's and IGA and Food City, and Food City does this for them, and so they kind of expect, a, you know, they're willing to come to us uh, to be able to do that. They're willing to walk around and meet new farmers and those types of things, but they certainly have a higher expectation of, uh, of what uh, they're looking for in their markets, and uh, in order to get that customer base to, to work for you, you know, you have to get as close to that as you uh, can. So all that said, I did the math, and to get this $30,000, uh, we, let's see, right now at the Whitley County Farmers Market membership, I think it's an annual rate of about $50. So I was gonna have to find 600 farmers to pay $50 in order to be able to do this. And that's just not gonna happen. And the flip side is, uh, I couldn't even figure out a way to get 50 par farmers to pay $600. That's outside of their ability as well. So this is not going to happen. And then I started to realize what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to like piece this together like a um, uh, one of those uh, fancy quilts. Um, and to figure out ways that we can put it all together. And so um, we are now working on that. I want to share with you the things that we've gotten going so far and that which we hope to get in the future. So the first thing we did is we came up with a list of who cares that we have a market. And, uh, and first of all, you've got your farmers, which you've probably 
already, you know, well identified, have a, a group with that. The second is your town, your city, or your tourism commission, those types of folks. Um, and you uh, have probably already met with your mayor and your city council uh, or your county group and talked to them about how you would really like to have their financial support for this. Uh, some of you may have been very successful in your county or your um, uh, local government goes, yeah, we want to hear, have some cash. Others of you are probably getting the response back, uh, yeah, well, there's no money and those types of things. So I hope to be able to share with you a little bit about how to make that a better sell. Uh, the third one is your local foodies. And those are your people who are absolutely passionate about food. Uh, they are passionate about it coming from the local area, that it is healthier, that they know their farmers, they want to decrease the carbon footprint of how far food has to travel. These are your uh, passionate individuals uh, that are at your farmer's market, but they're not farmers. That's the category I fall in. The next category is your health organizations. That's your hospital, your health departments, your doctor's offices, anybody that is involved in trying to improve health. And then your uh, fifth category is your large employers. And by that, I mean those organizations that pay a bunch of money for health insurance because what you're going to do is to develop a plan to go and to sell the idea of them participating in the farmer's market because of the fact that you're going to benefit them. Now the first thing I want to share with you here is, okay, come on, advance little slide, come on. James, can you get me to advance because some reason I'm not advancing. Um, I can't. Uh, you can give me okay. um, keyboard and mouse control, but I, I can't. I can't do it without that. Um, well, while, goodness, wonder what's causing the problem. Can you have you tried using the the right arrow or the space bar? Yeah. Uh, oh, space bar. Let me try. No, space bar is not working either. Ah, goodness gracious, what's happened here? Let's see. Let me. Well, why don't I? Why don't I take control of the slideshow and you just tell okay. me advance? Okay, that'd be great. Uh, there we go. Again, my apologies, all you virtual attendees. Okay, so while actually while we have um, well we have a break in the moment, I, I we've forgotten to start with a question uh, poll for the group. Um, ah, yeah. uh, we wanted to, we, you know, Sandy and Kristen and I um, had a little powwow uh, last week to talk talk through this webinar. One of the things we thought we would do is see uh, how confident, just do a confidence poll with with the uh, with the attendees to see how you guys are feeling about your fundraising efforts today, um, before and after the presentation. So hopefully um, we'll see an uptick. But um, so here is our first poll uh, take a look um, at that do you guys see it or do I need to show my screen first I see it on my screen James uh, but then oh, it says at the oh, very bottom okay. that I'm not allowed yeah. to vote okay <laughs> yeah I, I see it too all right so we've got um, at this point, we've got a third of the votes, 50% in, um, resoundingly twos and threes at this point. Um, we'll close it here in, in you know another 20 seconds or so. Okay. All right, so we are at 56% 50, three uh, scale of one to five, two, 33% two, and 11% no confidence. Thanks for participating, guys. Right. Um, all right, so let me show my screen. Okay.
Take it away, Sandy. Well, it's not showing up on my screen. You may have. Um, will you ah, there it is. Yeah. There it is. Okay, that's perfect. That's exactly where I, I was hoping that we could be. Okay. Great. Um, fantastic. So. Our farmers market in Whitley County was set up as a cooperative and by that it's a legal entity. Uh, it's a it's a great and very competent legal entity, but it's not the same as a nonprofit, which meant that if someone were to give a donation to the farmers market, that legal entity could not be able to give them back a receipt that said that their donation was going to a charitable activity and that they could deduct that from their taxes. So the first thing we needed to do was to come up with a nonprofit entity that could represent and help uh, the farmers market. And so using the model that I've seen in other organizations in which you have friends of the library, uh, we created the Friends of the Whitley County Farmers Market. And because we didn't have uh, about $1,500 to establish our own 501c3, we sought out a community foundation and created a fund through that community foundation. The one we chose is the 10 year old uh, foundation for Appalachian Kentucky based out of Hazard. Uh, but uh, you can see on your screen that Kentucky is blessed with several of these organizations uh, that can be approached to do this if you find yourself in that same situation. The beauty of this is just as soon as that fund is established, you are allowed to use their nonprofit status and their back room uh, which is their bookkeeping system and those types of things. And for a fee, at least for us, it was only 1%. For that fee, uh, they are able to provide the tax documentation that you need. I'm also allowed to go after grants, grants that say uh, nonprofit organizations need only apply. Uh, I can utilize the community foundation to be able to do that. And they in turn will be the fiscal agent and bring that money back, okay? So where do you find these local foodies? Well, first of all, you're gonna to have to gather your crowd of them. And one of the best ways to find them is at your farmer's market. Start talking to your farmers and ask them who are people that are passionate, who do they see all the time? Set up your, uh, you've got your, uh, probably got your, um, market table, encourage them to come by, get their names, contact information, find out who is just absolutely passionate about local food. And it will probably surprise you uh, with the number of individuals that come that are the age range. There seems to be no particular demographics group other than the fact that they're they're passionate. You create your fund or figure out a way to be able to make yourself into nonprofit and then you raise money that you grant back to your market. So we've been doing this now uh, for, this is our, I think we just started our third year of doing this. And so for the last two years, uh, we have put together kind of a modest approach of trying to raise some funds. Uh, we have had, uh, uh, we've taken over Kristen's restaurant uh, twice now. She has been extremely generous. And if we fill the place up with as many uh, of for our friends and family to just dine as they would be eating any other time, uh, she gives us a check for 15% of uh, gross profits of that day. And so that has raised uh, uh, between $550 to about $490 for us. Uh, us, uh, just for that event and it's pretty easy on your volunteers. Uh, we have uh, roasted corn on the cob at the market and sold it uh, to uh, folks that uh, are visiting that with the proceeds going into our group. Uh, we have, uh, we're going to be participating this year in the Kentucky Gives Day, uh, which means that we're going to again do a social media campaign and use our email to just tell people, hey, if you like having a farmer's market, you need to be a part of this, you need to help support it, you know, and, and so forth. Um, we had a farm to table dinner. Uh, it was a swanky dinner and it had, it was like $125 a plate and we had it for 24 individuals. Uh, it was a marvelous event in that we were able to, uh, we had about uh, $2,000 that we raised with that one. It was highly labor intensive. And so you've got to have somebody in your group that loves doing that sort of thing uh, to be able to, uh, to make it work. 
uh, what have we done with this particular money uh, in granting it back? Well, essentially our farmer's market said that uh, we need help uh, paying for what is our part-time seasonal market manager. Uh, the city of Corbin, uh, where one of the markets takes place, uh, was putting in money to help support that individual, but they said, we can do ours, but we can't do it when you go down the street to another city. And so we went, uh, we were able to pick up that expense uh, for them so that they would have the same level of coordination at both of those markets. Uh, we've also uh, been very excited to be able to uh, pay for some half page advertising uh, and have a special indoor Thanksgiving market where our farmers can come along and uh, sell so that folks can have local uh, food at their um, uh, Thanksgiving dinner and to be able to, of course, brag about how awesome it is to, to have local food. Um, so go ahead, James, go to the next one for me. Okay, here you go. Okay. There's a there it goes. little, okay, all righty. So now, um, that's where we are. We, we've not, with the first Friends of the market and with the support of the of the local municipalities, we have not reached that point where we can start to tap into the next two that I'm telling you about. Uh, and that is because that takes a lot of coordination. You cannot approach these places without having a, uh, a way to make sure that what you are going to provide for them, you can provide. Okay. Right now on volunteer level uh, layers, we haven't been able to do that. But what we would do when we get ready to tap this is we're going to make a huge list of every hospital, every clinic, every provider, every health department, all of those make up this master list. And then we're going to ask them to not support the farmer's market, not to sponsor the farmer's market, but to partner with the farmer's market, okay? And by that, you have to remember what it is that they need. Go ahead to the next one, if you would, James. You got it? Nope, not yet. It's coming. I think we've got a slow connection over the internet today. Somebody must be, okay. All right. All right. So anyhow, going back to our healthcare organizations, um, what is it that they need? Well, there is tons and tons of clinical evidence that shows that eating uh vegetables, eating more vegetables, eating more wholesome food is good for health indicators, good for health outcomes. And there's not any of these that aren't interested in that. They also need to be able to show that they're getting to a new group of people. So you're going to then go to them and say, listen, it's not about us at all. It's how I can help you. And I want you to be able to take advantage of this access to vegetables, uh, access to any programs that you want to do, access, you know, promise them that they can distribute information or do health checks or whatever it is. Tell them about how much you're going to advertise and tell people about their partnership with you. Uh, because when these organizations, I wish I could tell you that they're all sitting on big buckets of cash, and maybe some of them are, but I don't know any of them. Uh, but they have to justify every one of those dollars to their board of directors. And so consequently, it's going to have to come out of a bucket, and you're going to have to find the bucket in which they have got some money that they can spend to partner with you. And it's either going to be in their health education bucket, or it's going to be in their advertising bucket, or it's going to be in their uh, uh, community activity bucket. And you've got to figure out how to get access to those, and then you've got to put together a plan that meets that need for them, you know, so, uh, so anyhow, so that will allow you the opportunity to be able to, uh, to uh, negotiate with them. The next group is the employers, your large employers that are paying a boatload of money for health insurance. And I do not know of an employer right now, even the smaller ones, that every single year when they get the new premium for their health health insurance, their benefits don't start crying because they're so high. So again, you know that, you know who your list of bigger 
employers are. Your school districts are huge. You know, maybe some in, uh, industries that you might have in your area, some of your larger businesses and so forth. And you're again, you're not going to ask them to sponsor. You're going to ask them to partner. And you're going to go in there and tell them, you know, one, we are fully aware of the health benefits that come from this. You might be able to uh, reduce your um, uh, employees' use of, of uh, health care because they're having greater access to this. And then you may even want to ask them, hey, is there anything in particular that we could do for you? And part of that might be, again, you know, during July and August, setting up a mobile market just as soon as the shift ends uh, so that as employees are going out to their car, they're walking right by the very best of your county produce uh, get to their car. Uh, it may be in supplying, uh, if they have cafeterias like some of the hospitals, you guys may be uh, selling directly to their cafeteria to be able to do those types of things. Um, and um, so, so those are the, the how you're going to pitch this for these partnerships. Now I will share with you that it's very, very much these ideas. If you tell somebody that you're going to market that they're a partner, you better do it. If you promise them that their logo is going to be at your market, you've got to have somebody responsible for making sure that logo happens. If you say we're going to put you on our social media, that has to happen. They can't afford to give you a check and you not be able to produce what you told them that they were supposed to get. So go ahead, James, and give me the next one. All right. So uh, while we while we before we jump into the how, uh, I have a question from Sandy Deutsch. Yes, please. Um, I'm Sandy. I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit. Um, so Sandy okay. runs a, Sandy runs a market in in Louisville. Uh, and she, yes. Um, she's wondering if there are sort of exceptions to what you're you're talking about or like maybe different slightly different rules or completely different rules for dealing with a more competitive market where there are you know 20 markets in the county um well and sandra i appreciate that question i will tell you that uh, i've not spent a lot of time thinking about the competitive markets uh and part of that is because uh where i am uh uh, we are the opposite of that, you know, and uh, we just struggle to keep our market and to get our other counties in East, southeastern Kentucky to get markets uh, because we feel like we deserve that uh, in southeastern Kentucky. <laughs> um, but I think that uh, I think that the fundraising will go, go the same direction as your uh, marketing plan. And that is, how are you differentiating your market from every other one? Uh, is it, uh, you know, a unique set of farmers? Is it unique produce? Is it going and servicing an area that has not uh, traditionally been serviced? Um, finding out what makes your market separate from the 22 others in the Louisville area, and then finding out who also values that. Uh, and I'm sure you're going to be able to find your local foodies uh, because they just gravitate towards uh, farmers markets anyway. And with that, you can ask them as well. So that's the best answer that I have. And I wish I had more information for you on that, Sandra. Well, actually, um, Sandy, something that just occurred to me um, <clears throat> as, as uh, well, we got two Sandys. So um, Sandy Deutsch, who asked the question, um, uh, it occurs to me that you actually are you're pretty close to uh, one of the farm or the Ford plants. I wonder if they might be a good partnership um, for the market. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I imagine they pay a lot for their health insurance. And, and yeah, it's not necessarily even exclusive to employers. There's also unions um, that you could you could reach out. Uh, to. Uh. Um, so just a couple of thoughts. All right, take yeah. it away. Sandy Curd, take it away. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yes. Well, go ahead. So my next section is on how we do this, and I've already alluded to a lot of it, but so 
one of the things you uh, do is you take a look at the farmer's market and you've got to go and say, you know, we don't just sell vegetables. And I know some of you are thinking, right, we sell meat and we sell eggs and we sell crafts. No, no, no. You don't just sell foods, okay? So one, you uh, encourage the eating of vegetables. There is a thousand pages of clinical information to show that that helps reduce, uh, you know, it helps reduce healthcare costs and improves health, okay? Another one, and this is particularly important to your Chamber of Commerces and your city municipalities, is you incubate small businesses in both agriculture and crafts. You know, you give the safest place for somebody to start a new business, learn all there is to learn about running a business, all while not having to mortgage their house and their cars to do it with. I have said over and over again that uh, farmers markets it's the best incubator in the world and you can and you can even start it in high school with a garden in the backyard and learn because you're going to learn everything from the bookkeeping to how to sell yourself how to market your product all of those different things how to measure your results it's fantastic for incubation and so think of your market that way they are a hub for community engagement and uh, you know it's just it's actually beautiful to watch when the community Community comes together and you start seeing them interacting and participating. Our communities are actually thirsting for this type of engagement. And so you need to, you think of this as your community who cares about community engagement? Well, your cities care about that. Uh, other places that are looking for with where can we get the word out to something? They care about community uh, engagement, which leads to the next one. They're a center for communication, which means that, uh, that if you were to include uh, opportunity for say, every market has a special uh, nonprofit organization there to tell people about what they're doing. Well, those nonprofit folks are gonna be bringing with them their own crowd to come to your farmer's market. So you are doing a win win with them. You're allowing them to have space uh, to share their message and uh, and they're bringing their people who probably or some of them for the very first time have actually uh, you know uh, come to your market. And then finally you are good for the environment. Um, you're you're talking about organics a lot of places you're reducing the amount of transportation that goes with the transporting these foods so you make a list and this is not by any means comprehensive but i hope that it causes your all's uh creative brain cells to go off and say oh yeah and you know what we also do this this and that and add that to your list because all those are how you're going to be able to fundraise so go ahead and james if you would my next one all right all right and so then you come along and you are going to now match your pitch to the audience okay every single you can figure out what you want to offer in return but what you what you've got to do is you you match it to your audience and you customize that and and you have, uh, you know, you go ahead and you emphasize that partnership, how you're working together. Um, and you're gonna have to listen because you're gonna have to listen to find out what it is. And there may be times when you say, you know what? we'd really love to have a mobile market in your parking lot but we're just not there yet but if you will work with us we're hoping to do that the most important thing on this wholesale list is the follow-up and guys if you think you're going to walk in and talk to people about this and they're going to say yes here's my check for two thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars it's not happening you're going to have to do it yeah, you're gonna to have to do it multiple times. Your first visit needs to be focused on information sharing and getting to know. Make sure you're talking to the right person, you know, taking that information. Then you do a thank you for that visit. Then you do a follow-up visit. And then you keep doing this relationship. Year one, you may not be able to get an answer from them at all, but you need to let them know everybody that has agreed to partner with you. That can be the greatest thing in the world is just to send them a quick email, hey guys, I know you all are still working on how you would like to be able to partner with the farmer's market. I wanted to let you know that we were able to get Firestone on board and they're going to do this, this and that. 
you know, that's all you do. And you just keep that follow up. You never get angry when they say no. You never let any ugly people get you upset. You just keep working on it because that's what it takes to be able to do that. And then finally, uh, James, I think I've got one more screen in here. Yep. It just has a Q. All righty. Uh, and so, yeah, exactly. So, so those are the so those are the things with fundraising, and that didn't even get into the the grant writing uh, sort of thing. Uh, and that's a whole separate uh, thing of in and of itself. Um, what I hope with friends of the Whitley County's market is that eventually I will have a, a crowd of local foodies that is strong enough that we can raise in a year's time enough to be able to get a market manager who is, say, uh, not just seasonal. Uh, maybe it's a part-time market manager, uh, but it's uh, but it's still you know calendar to calendar, so that that market manager can work on some of these. Because right now I can't go to my local hospital and partner with them because I am not sure I have the capacity for being able to get them what they agreed to pay, to pay for. Once I can get that Toho in, then my market manager then becomes uh, the best friend to the friends of the farmer's market by being able, if I go to them and say, I've got this worked out with the hospital and so forth, all you have to do is take this logo and do this, 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 and that, and I can check it off uh, because I know that that market manager will follow through, and that market manager is going to be our friend because they know we got, we raised the money to grant it back to them. Um, and so, uh, but anyhow, that's our, that's the fundraising plan. Uh, again, I hope our little um, foray into uh, some ideas here are useful and um, I know Kristen has some additions to add to this and uh, I'm online and would be happy if anybody wants to reach me after this presentation by email you know come you go right ahead because I, I, I just love to share this I, I think we all deserve farmers markets and we have to all pull together to make it happen awesome thank you Sandy so much um, so I, I'd like to just sort of offer up the opportunity for questions um, for Sandy now um, while we work out the technical side of things to get uh, Kristen sorted out. So please feel free to submit them through the questions box or even raise your hand um, if you have a microphone and we can um, see if we can answer some of them. Um, in the meantime, Kristen, I'm gonna, Kristen, would you like me to, to run the slideshow for you or are you good with it? I, I let me try it from my end if that's possible. Okay. Yeah, um, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna send. I'm sending it to you now. All right. So our first question from Whitney. Uh, what about selling merchandise, T-shirts with local market logo or market bags? Have you guys done that? Uh, well, we actually have. Uh, but we. We have to be very careful. The farmers market, uh, the Whitley County Farmers Market Co-op has been doing t-shirts since its inception. And so as the friends of the market, we don't want to compete with them. Uh, and so consequently, we went looking for products that they did not sell. And we, we actually created our own logo, uh, which is the cutest little thing. I should have included it in my presentation, but it's like these little hands that are holding on to a shopping bag full of groceries called Friends of the Market. Uh, but, uh, but anyhow, we came up with a tote bag uh, that is uh, easy. You know, we had talked to a number of people that like to go to the farmer's market and said, what type of tote bag works best for you? And it was one that had like a narrow width uh, and then fit nicely under uh, arm. So we've done that we have done some uh, bumper stickers uh, so that folks can say I'm a local foodie I'm a friend of the farmers market um, and then we've also looked at and but have not had a chance to implement and that would be some type of customizable uh, you know like a, a keychain fob or a you know coffee mug or those types of things but again we do that type of merchandising in conjunction with what the farmers are doing with an effort not to compete and would uh, did you find any of those to be particularly better um, fundraising, um, better results than others? 
Well, uh, to be quite, the tote bags always get a lot of attention. Uh, we, because they were a fundraiser, we priced them very high. Uh, mm -hmm. And sometimes the price uh, turns people off. Uh, but merchandise is probably not our best uh, way of raising money. Uh, it is through our uh, other efforts that are our best fundraisers at this point. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Um... I hope that answers your question, Whitney. Um, uh, nothing else has come in, so Kristen, um, feel free to get started. Okay. Thanks, Sandy. And I'm going to be piggybacking a little bit um, on a few things you touched. It's a uh, a great day here in Whitley County because uh, it's the opening of Farmer's Market uh, today in downtown Corbin. So um, it's one of my favorite times of the year. Uh, if uh, Just to introduce myself a little bit, um, I, I know um, I've already touched on it, but I'm Kristen Smith. I'm the executive chef and owner of the Wrigley Tap Room in downtown Corbin. Uh, we are a farm to table restaurant. Um, and that's because I am first and foremost a farmer of uh, Faulkner Bent Farm. I'm sixth generation cattle farmer, hog farmer, um, and I love growing heirloom tomatoes and peppers and garlic. Um, I really got um, a real taste of it when I was doing grad work out in San Francisco um, and got to see how Alice Waters, who's a, re a very well-known restaurateur, um, partnered with the farmer's markets in Northern California and really started a revolution, which I think mm -hmm. has touched us here. Um, and so when I had the opportunity to come back home and take um, our my family farm over, I was trying to figure out how to tap in um, to doing our farm more sustainably uh, in the these present years and and it led me to uh, to selling food at the market because I had to get uh, beef and pork in people's mouths um, and it, it kind of went in that direction. Uh, I was a market vendor for five years. I was a founding member of the farmers market and then I, I for a stint worked at the extension service as the horticulture specialist um, and basically ran the farmers market for a year and a half. So I know some of the struggles um, as a vendor and as a manager. Um, and then um, I would like to say that um, I am I am one of those success stories of uh, a farmer's market incubation, small business um, that grew out of the farmer's market and went to brick and mortar uh, at the Wrigley Tap Room. And that's why it's a core mission of ours that we are a farm to table restaurant and over 50% of our sourced items comes from local farms in a hundred mile radius. Um, in farmer's markets, you know, I didn't realize this until I became a brick and mortar um, business on Main Street, which is amongst many other businesses, that farmer's market is very similar to that. And it's a crazy situation that we put ourselves in as vendors and as a market manager, trying to manage multiple businesses under a little roof or tents um, and to keep the peace and to allow everyone to be successful. Um, because like Sandy mentioned, people are used to shopping at Walmart and Aldi's and Kroger for their groceries. And so they're used to merchandising. They're used to things being in the same position. They're used to things being marketed in a very um, convenient way. And so we some we have to find the middle, um, and we have to keep the peace. Um, we have to make sure everyone sells or you know going well. Um, and we all want to succeed. Um, and so that mission in itself is crazy because at at the level of uh, being a brick and mortar and trying to keep the peace and being great neighbors and merchants together and thriving in a downtown setting um, as merchants is, is just as crazy. So um, give yourself, <laughs> give yourself um, some slack there because your mission is, is a difficult one, but keep going. 
keep going hard. Um, I just wanted to cover something. I was talking to uh, actually a Friends of the Market volunteer a few weeks ago. We were talking about what it takes to run a market. Um, and, and looking at it as a business, which is, is really important, you want to have, you really want to start off with a market operating um, or operation budget, okay? So I, I wrote one down, just scribbled one on a, an old invoice actually on the left. Um, and this, this um, these line items uh, really represent not a full-time market manager at the top at 3000 that's to, at a ten dollar an hour rate for 10 um, hours a week for seven months okay so that's kind of bare minimum um and i think sandy and i agree on that but that's not a thriving market right a thriving market needs a full-time manager but some of some of you you know struggle with keeping the same manager every year right um so this is just a mock-up to give you an example of what an operating um, budget might look like. And if you don't have one, you need to get one or just have an idea of one. Um, in Willie County, uh, for seven months out of the year, um, it would run you around $2,000 for radio. And this is under the stem of marketing, okay? Because marketing is one of your most important things. It has to, you have to keep people um, in mind of, um, at top of mind, for your market every week, a thousand dollars for social media, uh, and that's where probably you spend most of your money. I hope um, because I think you get the most bang for your buck in social media. Uh, Twenty-five hundred dollars for branding, um, and the good thing about branding is you don't have to rebrand every year. You've got to start with a great brand, though, right? And I know some of you, mar some of the markets out there, have really great branding. Um, I think t-shirts are actually better for branding um, and top of mind marketing than it really is for fundraising. But it, it, the good thing is it can do both. Events to me, in my experience, are really important to get big snaps or big pops at the market for when, when corn comes in, like uh, the Friends of the Market does the taste of the market with the corn. Um, also, we did jam uh, festivals, um, any any event that gets people there, and then your POS snap. You know that good thing about that is that's usually just once uh, a one-time fee, um, and maybe a little maintenance. But this is just a mock-up. I rounded it up to ten thousand. That's fourteen twenty-eight a month um, at seven months. Now, the reason I did that was so that you know. Um, in your situation, what it would take to fulfill that need, okay? And it's, at, some of you are thinking $10,000, how am I gonna raise that much money? Or as Sandy said, $30,000, how do we raise $30,000 a year? I mean, that's crazy sounding, right? Um, for seven months, or for, if you wanna, to me, if you need to look at the market as a year round um, venture and mission. So looking to the right, uh, who are your partners, who are your sponsors, right off, the city and county have to realize how big of an asset farmers markets are. For Corbin, it was huge. It started um, our momentum, our revolution here. And, and I think it's happening all over the state, right? Um, so ask the city and county, um, to partner with you, $2,500, that's nothing for them. Tourism needs to be giving money as well, because when I travel, and I know most of you guys travel, you're looking, granted we're foodies, right? But we're looking for that unique experience in that local uh, region, and that's at the farmer's market. And your tourism surely um, understands that. Um, and if they don't, you've got, you've got to help them understand that um, and show them the value um, and the asset of farmer's market. Um, but more than likely, I'm guessing um, some of you haven't even asked. And then the chamber, like I said, uh, the, the farmer's market is an incubation for the chamber of commerce, for their businesses. Um, and 
I would like to ask you, is your farmer's market a member of the chamber? Because that's your first step um, to becoming partners with them and then partners with you. And then your industries, um, after you've already gotten all those checks from the city, the tourism um, council, and then the chamber, um, that just leaves the industries, which is basically who I am and who I represent today. Um, people that support you, that own businesses, that have employees. Um, look around, drive around, find out who your industries are, who are already showing up at farmer's markets, what CEOs or presidents or employees are showing up at farmer's markets um, in your area or at your farmer's market um, and spending money. And ask them, um, would they like to partner with you? Um, it, and most importantly, because of all this, you're not alone, okay? You do have partners. You might, you maybe have not asked them to be your partner. Um, for me, on the, the flip side, being a, a, a farmer and a, a vendor in the past, you know, I, I went to my market and I said, I want to partner with you. Um, and this is how I want to do it. Uh, we started on a quarterly basis at the Wrigley Tap Room um, doing uh, charity events. And what we do, as uh, Sandy uh, mentioned earlier, we invite you in, uh, we ask for your logo, we, we pro promote it as an event um, on social media, um, and then we give 15% of our net, not our gross, but our net, because we have to make sure that um, our tips go to our tip um, or our servers. But typically that ranges um, from about 300 to sometimes $800 um, in that particular night that I write a check to that particular charity. And that's just on our side of it. We also allow those um, organizations, say your market, to set up a table to sell your merchandise, um, to have information, um, to go around and talk to people. Um, and um, I think one event, Sandy, uh, I think we ended up raising like $2,000 because y'all were selling stuff. Um, it might have been another event, but I feel like it was Friends of the Market last year um, because y'all had your tote bags. Um, but anyways, um, to me, that that's fairly easy money. You don't have to have a lot of volunteers there. Um, you do need to have someone, though, there to represent um, the market. But um, the community really comes out um, and supports uh, the farmer's market at the Wrigley when we have these. Um, and so I would recommend like going to a farmer or going to a restaurant in your area that sees value um, in local produce that is maybe already buying um, locally from the farmers and saying, you know, our farmers really need your support. Is there any way you can swing this? And on the side of the restaurant too, we, we usually have it on a night that is typically low for us, uh, Tuesdays nights. And so we actually end up doing a few hundred dollars more as well. And so it's both, it's beneficial for both the restaurant and uh, the organization. Um, and so I, I think it's an easy sell if you, if you try to, um, to knock on a restaurant's door and ask them to partner with you in this way. And if you need my help, um, in contacting a restaurant um, and talking them through it, I would be very happy in doing that. Um, but I think most farm to table restaurants um, are gonna be really thrilled to actually help you in this capacity. Um, also look at um, other community partners. Um, who are your influencers? They have so much impact on your community. Um, and the, your influencers are, are a person in the community that everyone follows on Facebook. They get the word out. Um, they're always talking about the farmer's market. Um, they are your ambassador. And so find ambassadors that have huge influence in your community. Um, and you already know who those are, right? But maybe there's people out there that you could boost them into being even better ambassadors. Um, and make sure that those this is really important that those influencers stay positive right um 
Also, um, who in your community is already supporting you? You know, we kind of already went over that, but the health department, extension, um, churches, um, and, and, you know, give them a little love back. Uh, I know our farmer's market um, gives us a discount um, at the Wrigley for t-shirts. And so then I require all my um, employees to wear the farmer's market t-shirt every market day. Um, and so that's, you know, that's a little bit of love back. Um, but the most important thing is, you know, ask. Um, I, I grew up in a family that sold jewelry. And if, if any of you know me, I, I don't wear a whole lot of jewelry. I'm a farmer and I'm a chef. And so you can't really wear a lot of jewelry. Um, you might die if you do. <laughs> but, um, but then, you know, I grew up and um, I grew into my adulthood and I started working at REI. And when I was in San Francisco and I was a salesman and I started selling backpacks and uh, camping equipment. And I found that I realized that I am a salesman. I have to believe, but I have to believe in what I'm selling. And I know all of you are in the position you are because you believe in what you do. You believe in local produce. You believe in what um, farmers are doing and the agriculture needs of your community. And so to me, don't feel like you're always, you're asking all these partners and these sponsors and you're uncomfortable about it. Don't feel like you're asking it because you're like the sleazy salesman, because you're not, because what you're doing is making a difference. And so it's easier when you believe in it to ask for it, right? Um, so don't be afraid because what you're doing is changing lives and it's changing your community. And that's all I have. If you have an email, um, if you would like to email me on any questions um, further from this, um, you can hit reach me at faulknerbentfarm at gmail.com. Uh, but um, James, I can open up to questions or uh, we can go any direction. Great. So um, I've got, I've got, I, I think that was a beautiful way to end it. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Um, yeah. One thing that comes to mind is something that my mother used to tell me growing up was that you have to wiggle the doorknob to see if it's locked. Um, <laughs> and I, I've kept that for a really long time. You, know, you have to ask the question before you know, before you decide, before you find out what the answer is. So um, don't be afraid to just sort of out of the blue approach folks. Um, and you know what? Um, another is inevitable in this. Yeah. Well, and I will say one more thing. Um, my my pap, he he said, you know, you got to know the ABCs of of selling, right? And it's always be closing. Mm -hmm. And so, just like what Sandy said, you kind of have to maybe go back and back and back, but always be asking not if you want an egg, but how many eggs do you want? Yeah. Where? Yeah. So. Um, one way to frame it would be we're, hold, we're hosting this fundraiser. How would you like to be involved in it? Absolutely. Um, so uh, Susan from, from the Bowling Green uh, area is asking when slash what way is the best way to contact the restaurants? Don't want to interrupt business. Uh, would email contact be okay to set up a meeting? I think this is an Absolutely. excellent question for you, Kristen. <laughs> yes. And that's a very, very important question because nothing pisses us off more when people uh, want our attention when we're, you know, flaming something on the grill and can we got to watch, you know, our eyebrows. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, so busy time, you know, the best time uh, is in the mornings um, before, really before 10, 1030 or um, between your um, lunch and dinner crowds usually between two and four um, email is a great st kicking off um, step but you might have to follow through with that um, the best thing is is definitely um, email to give a preemptive like i'm coming after you <laughs> kind of thing <laughs> um, and then show up because they need a face you know they need um and, and i would wear your market t-shirt or what you're about, you know, like whatever, you know, eat local um, to so that they see, you know, that you're approachable and 
and that you're on the same team. Um, and, and always, you know, kind of be like, I don't know if this is a good time, but I'd love to set up a time, you know, but be, be, um, insistent on it. Cause, um, Sandy's really great at that, but, um, <laughs> and it, it's, if they put you off, don't, that doesn't mean they don't want to talk to you. That just means they have 50,000 things running through their head. Mm -hmm. Um, and just don't feel like, um, you, you can't go back and back. I know it takes a little bit more extra effort, but could, uh, stay on top of it. Yeah. Uh, and stay positive too. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. There's, there's definitely an element of salesmanship to this that, that is really useful to know. And some of the, some of the basic rules are just to always stay positive. Don't use negative language, always assume the sale and keep, keep your pitch simple. Um, so don't it, you know, utilize if, if you feel like you have said everything, utilize the awkward silence that may come from that <laughs> because somebody's going to fill the space and you don't need to do that. Um, but, uh, I think, I hope that's helpful. I, yeah, I, my general experience with restaurants is, uh, a, a, a heads up email or an effort, an initial contact through email or maybe a phone call during the off hours, two to four is a great window. Um, usually that's when salesmen, that's when, you know, wine salesmen are coming out. That's when um, Cisco, if you're using Cisco that, that, for, with restaurants, that's, that's when the main distributor mm -hmm. contacts are coming to coming to visit um, because they, they know that that's the, the best time to, to have an actual sit down meeting. Um, you also know that that's when the, the interviews happen if you're working at one. Right. Um, so, uh, I think in, in a heads up email and then don't, don't, don't even expect a response, but just know that you've given them the heads up that you're coming. Um, cause the, the restaurant life is a, is a hectic one. Um, and you know, that doesn't, it, the core email correspondence isn't typically a strength of restaurateurs. So no, I, unfortunately not. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't do anything. Um, I wouldn't read too far into silence there. Um, so if, um, yeah, the, we had, we still have, well, we're running, we're about at an hour now. So, um, Please shoot some questions in if you guys have any. Um, I'm going to throw out this poll, the second yeah. poll, to see how you guys feel. Um, would love to see that. Uh, and while while we're going through that, um, I would love to hear, or I'd love to kind of mention a couple of things that CFA is doing right now. Um, we have... Um, we have a marketing mini grant that's coming out in the in the near future. Uh, we've budgeted. We have uh, fifteen thousand dollars that through our FMPP grant to for paid media. Um, we're splitting that out, so we're going to target. We're going to target um, for the markets that in our in our farmers market support program. We're going to target uh, specific ads for either regions if they make sense or individual markets um, on your behalf as well as offer a mini mini marketing grant it's a $250 grant um or and or we're still kind of sorting this out um the 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 opportunity to to purchase um the opportunity to get a Kentucky Double Dollars tent um they're really nice uh tents uh and we've gotten a lot of positive feedback from the markets that we've been able to give them to um so we're going to offer that again this year so the $250 um mini marketing grant is for um is for paid media um so it could be signage it can be it can be your own facebook ads or instagram ads um or it can be um those are the things that are coming to mind in the moment but i'm drawing a blank otherwise but um, we have a couple of other ideas and we're, we're happy to, to work with you to, to kind of come up with it. But we've budgeted about 27 um, mini marketing grants for the app for this year. So those keep an eye out for those. Um, also, we are 
Um, for those of you that have been involved with or been in, in tune with what's been going on with the home-based processing um, legislative efforts, um, we are sending out a, a thank you letter to uh, Representative Heath and Senator Hornback um, at the end of the week. And we're asking folks, that, uh, we're offering the opportunity for folks to co-sign that letter. Um, you can see that through our Facebook group or in our Google group. You, if if you received any of these invites, you should have, you should be, uh, for the webinar today, you, sh you should have, you should have also seen those emails. But please feel free to email me if you, um, if you would like more information. My name, my my email is james at cfaky.org. Um, let's see what else. What else? What else am I forgetting? Um, there is a. There's also a growing food security um, funding opportunity for Eastern Kentucky markets. Um, you should also be able to see more details about that through our Google group and Facebook group. Uh, so take a look. Take a look at those. Um, I, I've, I was, I saw that last night, but I haven't seen much more about the, the information behind it. So please feel free to go find it there. Um, and I think we're done here. So we've got 55% voted. Um, I'm going to close. And so um, improvement. So we got a much more, a lot more very confident folks this time around. So that's great news. Um, thanks everyone for, for um, participating. So one of the comments, uh, one of the last questions before we get going, um, Suzanne Stumbo out of Pikeville is mentioning, is saying that this is hard because leadership turns over so quickly. Um, and that is a, that is a challenge. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering, you know, Whitley's, had some stability challenges um indeed yes so i'd love for it love to hear what you guys have to say about it like how do you how do you well, overcome think, that yeah i think one of the advantages is you have the separate organization that deals with the fundraising uh because the friends has stability um and uh you know and and that it doesn't have that accordion nature with it. Um, and so, um, you know, uh, but you still have to, you still have to remain in communications with your farmers uh, and their organization uh, or else that, you know, uh, you'll be working against each other instead of with each other. Uh, but that's one of the, that that's uh, lack of stability is one of the things that I think uh, having a, an alternate uh, organization uh, can help create some of the stability that you need when it comes to fundraising. Mm -hmm. And I will say that, you know, there's, there's a, um, some of the, some of the, I don't know what the word is, uh, some of the challenges that Whitley, Whitley endured over the last um, few years is in the way we, you guys have come out of it um, is really sort of a, a proof of the resiliency of your community, which is really great to see. Um, and uh, sometimes that that doesn't show up until until markets are at a crossroads of some sort. Um, and I think Pikeville is a great example of a market that that would show its resiliency when it when it needs it. Um, and I, I I've been really impressed with what I've seen there. So. Um, so I, I think, Suzanne, I think that one of the best things you can do is just have a good plan and um, make sure make sure that you are um, offering the opportunity to as many people as, as you can to help um, and support the market. Yeah, just different philosophies. Yes. Yep. The, that's that's something that we all deal with. Um, uh, it doesn't matter if rural or urban, there's just a lot of, um, there are a lot of people who see the world in different ways and you, you kind of have to find the way that, 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 that appeals to as many as, of them as possible. Um, okay, so I, I'm not seeing any other questions. Anybody else have any questions, please send them out. Uh, otherwise, we're going to wrap up here in the next few minutes. 
Um, can you, you guys have done fundraising. I know that I'm sad, I'm sad to see that, uh, I've got, I'm not familiar with, I think maybe some of the markets on here have done farm to table fundraisers before, uh, and they've, they've taken all sorts of shapes. Um, and I thought, um, you, so, you know, with, with Chris and with your, um, brick and mortar location, it, it's awfully convenient to just sort of go right there. Um, yeah. have you, prior to your store, restaurant, did you have, did you guys ever do a fundraising, uh, in sort of an open air effort or can you speak yeah. to the, yes, I've done a few of those. Um, they definitely are more challenging. Mm -hmm. more challenging um but they feed to more of the encompassing mission of agriculture you know seeing mm -hmm. why it uh is so important to maybe have a farm to table charity event um on a farm um but you know the problem with that is you have to you have to um have staff yep you know it takes a lot of staffing so you have to have servers you have to have um your kitchen crew um and then you have to basic i mean it's basically like a dinner or farmer's market because you have to pack yeah. up everything and take it out there um the food isn't going to be as fresh because it's on sternos mm -hmm. um, but it can be done and it it's a there's a pros and cons to both of them um brick and mortar allows it to happen any time of the year not worrying about weather um but i mean there's definitely for me a little bit more anxiety doing it in open air but if you can get this at the <laughs> right moment it is super magical mm -hmm. and, and there people are... are more willing to pay you know um now you run into the alcohol issue um and the way we've handled that, um, because, you know, you can make a lot more money when alcohol is there, especially if you're asking for donations at the end of the night, um, <laughs> and which I always recommend. Um, but um, what we typically do is the ticket goes to um, a tour of the farm, not the food um, and not the drink. That's a gift. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're, if you're putting these together, it, ask for donations on all sides. So donations from, from partners, like, um, like maybe you can get wine as a donate, as a donation. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, I was just recently at an event, um, that was a charity event and there was free flowing wine. Uh, they showed a small video and, the most unassuming person wrote a thousand dollar check <laughs> yeah right yeah it can happen it yeah. can happen yeah well i think that's a pretty good place to wrap it up i haven't gotten any more questions so um thanks everybody Whoop, we got one um just under the wire babette if farm to table is grant funded through kentucky proud uh the funding is limited and proceeds go to a 501c3. Tremendous amount of work. Kentucky Proud's grant limits number of dinners per county. Only $500 direct to farmers. $500 direct to farmers, which doesn't go far when the requirement is to feed 50 as a minimum. So yeah, uh, I, that we attempted one of those last year and and had to in the final our council uh you know it i mean it, it's a great program but the the state is so desperate that it not get abused that it i mean you really you got to know what you're doing before you do it um mm -hmm. and i mean and it's not that you sell 50 tickets it's that you have 50 people on site and that you document that you know and then you've got to match your dollar amount with what you're spending and there's even limitations on the type you know it's got to be you know food it can't be the you know napkin or something like that you know so um so it's that's a grant you just got to read very carefully before you jump into yeah 
Let's, and 50 guests, uh, I mean, that's that's a lot of work. 50 guests yeah. are not minimal. I mean. Um, yeah, and Babette is doing two of them. Uh, she just wrote, wrote in. Um, awesome. Fantastic. So, yeah. And she's involved in two others, but those those are dependent. So there's a there's a new uh, farmers market site being built at the Marksbury Market. Okay. Um, oh yeah. Washington. Sure. Uh, and they're gonna do they're gonna do some stuff there. Um, and Babette's been on the front lines of that for for some time now. So. Um, well, if there's any nugget of gold I could give you on an event like that, it would be lighting. You can't have mm. enough lighting. <laughs> up, up lighting, down lighting, well, candlelight. <laughs> no, no, uh, production <laughs> light. Uh, just to, uh, I, do you mind if I share the story, Kristen? Or? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So for our our one farm to table dinner, that was, I mean, it was it was swanky, it was beautiful, and Kristen was our celebrity chef, and um and we didn't realize how dark it got in November, and here she was trying to sear these little <laughs> lamb lollipops, and she was outside <laughs> trying to do it by the flashlight in her uh, iPhone uh, because we'd forgotten that she needed light to be able to see how to grill, <laughs> and, but she did it. Let me tell you what, she is a professional. She pulled it off. Well, thank you. But yeah, I mean, and also lighting just, I mean, ambiance is everything, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'm going to have to get off here and yeah. jump to another meeting. Fantastic uh, little webinar. Thank you, James. And thank you, James. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, thanks everyone for thanks for everyone for joining. Um, when I close this up, you will be prompted for a survey. Please let us know how you felt this survey, this webinar went. Um, it's helpful for us for our grant reporting as well as um, uh, just sort of to make sure that we're make we're addressing things that are of use to farmers markets in Kentucky. So. Um, Thank you so much, everyone, for coming out. We really appreciate you uh, taking the time to be with us tonight, to this afternoon. And um, thanks. Um, we'll 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 be in touch about our next uh, webinar. Uh, we have one coming up soon that will be just about crowd counting. Um, uh, we have yet to announce when that will happen, but it'll happen um, in the coming um, coming weeks for sure. Thanks so much. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.